Hello and welcome everybody. It is Friday, which means it's time for our live critique session. And I already have about, uh, I think, three or four, I think I have four or so right now already sent in. But if you guys want to get in for the critique today, all you have to do while watching live is shoot me an email to folygon at gmail.com. And the quicker you send it in, the more likely you will be to get in on today's stream. If not, uh, we do it every Friday, so if you send something in, you'll still be most recently in the queue, so uh, we'll take care of it next weekend, if not today. Other than that, uh, if you don't know who I am, again, I am Folygon, or Ben, whichever one works for you, and there are links below to all my stuff, artwork, etc., but uh, the one that I would appreciate you checking out the most is my Gumroad. It's just gumroad.com slash Folygon. I have some uh, courses on here, some if you're brand new to ZBrush, brand new to digital sculpting, never even put a little foot into uh, 3D modeling, I recommend my uh, quick start course here. I have some other stuff on here. Brushes, materials, base meshes, all sorts of uh, goodies on here that I would appreciate you checking out. Uh, other than that, I say we go ahead and get started on our first model, which is not this one. This is actually something that I've been working on for the past uh, couple streams now, obviously, uh, or I hope obviously at this point, I think we've gotten a little bit closer, but Felix Shelberg or PewDiePie uh, doing a little bit of a kind of Pixar-ish style on him. So that's been a lot of fun, but we will not be working on this today unless we run out of things to critique. Last week on Friday, I think we had like 10, 10 or 11 different things to critique. It was, it was absurd. We had uh, quite a lot. So hopefully today uh, we can get through a lot as well. Other than that though, let's go ahead and load up our first Z tool here and take a look. This one uh, is sent in by Bill. Bill, what you got for us, Bill? Where'd I? Here, let me close a couple things here. Find my email. <clears throat> All right. Bill has provided us with a reference as well. Beckert donating two dollars using Kitty Attack. Well, thank you, Beckert. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks like it's not loading for some reason, uh, but I can I can feel it, Mr. Krabs. Thank you, Beckert, for the uh, two bucks there. I appreciate that, man. And welcome. How you doing? Hmm. Beckert, if you guys don't know, is typically the the first one in here every day. He is the man. All right. So, Bill, you don't have anything specific on the um, on the text on what you want me to look at, but you did provide a reference. So I say we grab that and import that in here. Let's see. I'll be using the Spotlight tool for this. We'll just grab that, ploop it in, and we will turn up our opacity and make sure Spotlight projection is off. All right. So let's see, I think I'll just use this kind of blown up version that you have here on the right. Why can I not move my mouse? Man, that was frustrating. All right, <laughs> cool. Well, uh, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is turn off the poly paint uh, and material. Uh, it might just be the material. Uh, I would recommend not using this material. I, I think this is one of, the, one of the skin shade materials. I'm not really sure. But uh, I hate this material. I would recommend not using this material uh, for everybody. It's not a very appealing shader, uh, and yeah, it's just it's not good all around. Uh, the Zebro paint material here is pretty good. Uh, you can find that online for free, as well as just default in ZBrush. There is the uh, where is it? Skin Shade Four is what I'm looking for. The Skin Shade Four material is also pretty good. So uh, Skin Shade Four natively in here. Definitely use that, or uh, I kind of like the Zebro paint material. It just uh, has a slightly different quality, makes things feel uh, a little bit more solid, has some nice SSS, uh, etc., etc. Uh, but yes, we will be turning off the poly paint and not focusing on that. I'll also be turning off your fibers. Uh, I would, or you know what? I might be wrong in that. Let me see here, are these fibers? I thought these were fibers. Okay, so you have uh, some uh, geometric planes here with a texture applied here. I'm not sure uh, what's going on with like the metalness factor here, but it's very, very uh, reflective. 
and I think the texture, the hair texture that you have here is probably pretty good. I think just the number of planes and application of that is, uh, it could be a little bit more dense. It feels very, um, very flat and like there's not very much to make it actually have a thickness and feel like it's um, hair. Other than that, um, the material's the main uh, offender there that kind of uh, turns me off from that feeling a little bit like hair. So we're gonna toggle that hair off and we are gonna get in here and take a look. I think what I'm going to do is start from the bottom and work our way up into the face. Uh, so we'll start with kind of the easier stuff and then get up into the face. Uh, let me know if you guys can hear me in chat. I am not getting my chat to load very well here. Let me refresh this real fast just to make sure everything is cool. Shout out something in chat though if you can hear me. And let's go ahead and get critiquing. So let's start down here with the clothing. You do have some really good stuff uh, going on here in general, Bill. You have some really nice shapes in the face. Uh, you have some really nice shapes uh, in the hands and clothes. We'll, we'll talk about those each separately as we come around to them. The first thing I want to talk about, though, is your folds. The folds in your clothing are a little bit stiff, I would say. So I've talked about this many times on stream, but it's this little fundamental called edge quality. And you have a little bit of this going on, but I think you could push it quite a bit further. Uh, awesome, awesome, you guys can hear me. What's going on, Ghost and Becker? How you guys doing? You can hear me, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, edge quality is this basic principle that when making a stroke from start to end, you never want that stroke to be exactly the same throughout. So maybe you have what you have going on here a little bit where it kind of fades out a little over time. That's nice, that's what we like to see. Some of these though, I think for this type of material, I think you could push this kind of quality uh, a little bit further. So I would do a second, uh, at least another pass on here and you know think about going from a little bit tighter to fading out. Some of these places, it just feels a little um, unnatural, like it was just kind of put in there to make some random noise. Uh, up here towards the shoulders and neck area, it's probably drawn a little bit tighter. I do see that you have these unbuttoned now, so I would say probably a little bit tighter down here and a little bit less so down here. So if this were a little bit tighter, I would say think about the direction, uh, directionality of those strokes a little bit more. But since this is a little bit more loose, I would say get rid of these completely, and instead of that, if you want to start getting some secondary form up here, maybe start thinking about, um, you know, maybe taking one of these edges and doing a little, like, fold flip over for that, having, having just some irregularity in the cloth. You know, you can play around with it. I'll leave that up to your discretion. Uh, for the, um, um, what would you call these, buttonholes, I guess, I would maybe consider doing a live boolean operation or just actually cutting a hole in the geometry because right now it, it feels very sculpted on. It doesn't feel like it's actually, um, it doesn't feel like I could actually slip a button through here, right? So I would say either actually put a hole in the geometry or instead start to do something like what I'm doing here where you build it up a little bit more and then what you can do is like mask off one side a little bit, take your move brush and like close this up and make it feel like, you know, you can't really see the inside there. So it feels more like it's an actual buttonhole and then you can play with that. I mean, that's what I did in five seconds. So I think you can uh, make those feel quite a bit better though. Uh, going out here to the jacket, uh, I would say pay attention to your silhouette here. This shape feels very awkward. Um, kind of coming down here. I think I think this is fine, what you, like the general shape that you're trying to create, but this feels very awkward. So let's play around with the area around the sleeves. And then, oh, are these connected? Let me see here. They are, okay. So maybe what you could do is 
pull your mask around there like that and then come through and just inflate this area a little bit so it's just a little bit of an unnecessary form in the silhouette that was kind of just making it feel really awkward there you might have like a wider belly and some wider hips but you still need the form to like flow into that in a somewhat natural and convincing way so that it you know you gotta you gotta think about that kind of stuff as well but that i think uh starts to feel quite a bit better uh if you want to you know take that even further i think you could do some curve here just make it feel a little bit more natural and, and smooth uh or even you know coming out the other way you can play with this however you want just pay attention to that super hard um let's go back here that super hard like silhouette break there that feels is that feels a little awkward all right uh, I'd say the same notes on the folds here on the jacket as what I did down here think about you know fading some of those out over time Desan, what's going on for those that are just joining us if you don't know we're doing critiques today it's critique Friday or bully Friday as some of you call it <laughs> But the objective is not to bully, the objective is to improve. So uh, we're starting here on Bill's uh, Benjamin, Benjamin Franklin. And we're starting from the bottom here and I'm just kind of working my way up and we'll get to the face here shortly. Some almonds. Almonds are delish. Love me some almonds. Let's see. I like what you've done with the cuff here. There's some good stuff going on there. You could maybe make this connection a little bit more convincing, just because where that uh, button is right now, it, it's not like actually connecting to the cloth on the other side, so it feels a little bit awkward. And then the cloth here at the end just feels a little thick as well. You might be able to play with that. As for the hands, handy dandies, uh, I... I don't know what you're making this for, so you might be making this for something that's going to be animated. Uh, if that is the case, you know, oftentimes you see hands in these really kind of robotic T-pose poses, and uh, I hate making hands this way because it makes them feel very robotic and it's hard to, because you don't, you never make like this freaking pose with your hands, so it's hard to sculpt something in that pose. I try to sculpt my hands in a little bit more of a relaxed position or a more organic position. So if you can do that, I would maybe consider it. Um, there's definitely some stiffness going on here, not just in the pose, but in the fingers themselves. Think about adding a little bit more taper here to these fingers. Um, overall, you know, we want to avoid parallels a lot of the time unless it directly adds to the design in some way. Um, we want to think about straights versus curves so that we can get away from uh, some of this feeling a little bit too awkward. Typically what I like to see on fingers, the tops of fingers tend to be quite a bit more straight on top and a little bit more rounded on the bottom. I think these fingers are could use a little bit more work than just that, but just as kind of a starting point, we'll push these a little bit in that direction. So. Here, I'm gonna knock some of this form back just so you can see what I'm talking about here. So we're going from straight, knuckle hit straight, knuckle hit straight, and I'll even kind of destroy your fingernail there, my bad. Don't worry about it. Let's uh, get some more roundness on the bottom. And I'll just kind of pull this out from the side. So what I wanna see here, again, if we, can I just solo that a little bit, maybe? So I wanna see more of a one, two, three kind of hit. Typically what you'll see is, you know, not even much of a break here. I, I don't wanna see a lot of this going on on top of your finger, like what you have right now. See on that other finger how that dips in so much? I'd say try to straighten that out quite a bit on top. And then for the bottoms of your finger, I think you can get you know a little bit more of that roundness. So on the front, you go straight, and then on the bottom, more rounded. So in general, that's what I try to aim for on my fingers. It tends to give it a really nice contrast in shape, and it's one of those fundamentals that we wanna pay attention to of streets versus curves. 
Other than that, think about like tapering some of these shapes so they're not quite so parallel and stiff feeling. I know it's going to be tough in this pose, but hopefully that uh, gets you headed in a good direction. All right, let's move on up to our face here. I think some of this stuff is done pretty well, so I will not comment on that. Um, let's see here. We got Ben Franklin. I think he invented the bifocals, if I'm not mistaken. He invented a bunch of stuff. What's going on, Kuanor? And Asagi, how you guys doing? No, we've only, I just ate my like little tea string there. <laughs> I've only been streaming for about 15 minutes. This is the, the first uh, critique model that we're looking at today so far. All right, um, so our glasses, our glasses, right? I think a lot of that will be covered up by the hair back here, so you could probably be fine with that. Maybe just get that lining up with the, um, the ear a little bit better. And then in terms of that, like interpenetrating into the face, I think a lot of the form changes that we make to our face here will actually make this a lot better. Let me mute my phone so stop getting all these notifications. All right, so let's turn off our glasses and take a look at our face. Now, Bill, you got some awesome stuff going on in the face. I'm, I'm very impressed. You've done a great job. But I think there are a few things that we can do here to start pushing more in the direction of the likeness of this character's head. So I'm going to break some stuff. Of course, that's what we love to do here. <laughs> but along the way, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, fix more than what we break. Um, all right, so let's get started. I, and you have subdivs. This is very good. I appreciate this. It makes it so much easier for me to get in here and make some big form changes. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to match the angle that I'm seeing here. The first thing that st stood out to me immediately was the shape of the chin uh, it not being a long enough little, uh, little hump there. So pull that down. It looks like it's maybe even a bit wider towards the bottom. It looks like it's kind of an egg shape. So kind of keep that in mind, like a little, a little egg. That's a half egg, but the mask takes care of the rest. So a little bit of an egg shape there. So I would try to focus on that a little bit. And then just like where this is uh, hitting back here and combining into the rest of the form. You've started to do this a little bit, I can tell but just maybe coming through here and helping to transition this with your pinch brush or something like that, holding Alt, getting that to flow in there a little bit better. And then obviously, you know, I'm adding more volume here, so we need to come back to the front and continue to mess with the shape there, but we are starting to get there slowly but surely. And I think with a little bit of work there, you can get that shaped up a little bit more closely. The next thing I immediately noticed was that your face is just a little bit too wide in the cheekbone area. So if we look at your reference image coming up this way from the side of the face all the way up to the corner of the eye up to the, the um, brow there, it starts to dip in quite a bit more. So I know it's hard when you're looking at something that's maybe not at the exact angle that you would like. Three quarters are typically very nice though because they can help you um, gain a lot of information from your from your character. I know it's tough, but what we want to do here, what I'm kind of seeing, is a, quite a bit of a pull in. Probably, let's go all the way around here. So I'm going to mask this off. I'm going to grab a large move brush and just start pulling in. Let's maybe even do one of these. Try something like this. So I'm gonna break some stuff, as I said. Blasian Ninja, thank you for the follow, appreciate it. So we're starting to pull in here. I think a little bit of pull back along the corner of the mouth is also lending to some of this feeling, whoops, even more tapered in there. So I think a little bit of that as well, and just start pulling this in. And that three quarters starting to feel a, a little bit more accurate. If we want, maybe we can fix our eyes just so they're not feeling quite so awkward there. I would say mess with the angle of your eyes as well. Instead of angling down and out like that, 
it looks like they might have a little bit of that, but maybe try to get them uh, just a little bit more um, uh, flat, a little bit more parallel in that area. Uh, let's see, big shapes, big shapes. Coming up into the brow, make sure that you're getting that separation between the brow and the nose. So there's like a little bit of form there. That might be something you wanna do in posing uh, later on. I'm not sure how you're gonna be handling this or what you're gonna be using it for, but you can very easily come through here, do a little bit of a carve in, maybe start to build that up with like a clay brush or something. So pay attention to that as well. I guess we can do that just very quickly here. Let's fill in some of that and I'll just kind of smooth that out. I don't want to spend the time on one little brow here. Uh, let's see, what else is sticking out here? Not sure if you're gonna need a mouth bag for this, but just looking at the lips, I actually think the lips that you have made here are more appealing than what I'm seeing in the reference image. Uh, but if accuracy is what you're aiming for, uh, you might want to get a little bit more meat down here and then it looks like the shape of the lip here on the bottom starts to turn in quite a bit faster than what you have. I honestly like the more gradual turn. I think um, I think you've done a better job than what I'm seeing there at uh, interpreting some, some more appealing shapes. Uh, I think you should try to improve you know, a design if you can in any way, uh, but if you're doing this for like a client or something and they're asking, you know, for accuracy, that's not always possible. So try to turn that in a little bit more up top. I think a little bit of the same and uh, you probably got just like a little bit too much depth going on for how far that's dipping down here in the middle. So pay attention to that as well. The nose, big old Benjamin Schnoz here. Let's see, let's grab this from the side and fix the angle looks to be pointed down quite a bit more in the concept from what I can tell. And maybe a little bit higher on the bridge with a little bit of a dip in there. And then let's pull up that corner. And I think just the general direction of that needs to change a tad. There's quite a few sharp shapes going on in that nose, so if you wanna start doing a little bit of a pinch to start planing that out a bit more, that's probably a good idea. And if you don't want it to get super sharp, which I typically don't, especially with a dude that's so meaty like Benjamin here, we'd probably wanna go back through and start softening some of that up. But we do wanna start getting that plane transitioning how we see it in the concept. Let's see. I think that would be a pretty good place for you to start here. There's a bunch more that, you know, are little changes, but I think those are the kind of big things that I immediately notice. Some other small things that I think you could probably do to get a little bit closer and more accurate. It looks like the lids here are possibly um, just a little bit more narrow than what you have. Quite a bit more narrow, actually. So think about that, the eyes might just be too big in general and that might be leading to that. Maybe get a little bit more pinch in around that so it feels tighter, like the shape that I see there. Uh, coming down around the brow, make sure you're not losing too much volume around here. Think about these bigger shapes that we're seeing. I'm not seeing anything that would indicate a uh, carved in surface like what you had there. So let's round that back out. Let's see, big old ball chin down here. Um, other than that, maybe a little bit more pull in on the ears a little bit here. Get that feel a little bit tighter, more um, angled correctly. Remember that, um, you know, even on the fattest face, that bone still doesn't move. So some bony landmarks, you know, are still gonna be present. Typically on really fat faces, uh, the ear can be like inset a little bit because the ear typically isn't going to like bulge out the fatter a face gets. Let's see, general, I think that's about it that I'll say there. So let's see, 
How much did we actually change? Let's roll back here to the, the very beginning. Ooh, we'll turn off the poly paint. So in general, uh, just a few things to tighten up the, the face, get a little bit closer to the, uh, the look here. But I think, yeah, I think that'll do it for you. Try those out. Let me know how it goes. Did I just... Oh, we, we lost it all. Well, that's okay. I wasn't... I didn't need it. <laughs> all right. Good luck with that, Bill. And uh, hopefully the rest of the critique here has been helpful for you. With that, I say we move on to the next one. Hawk Proto, what is going on, man? Uh, Kareem asks, are you going to critique other works during this stream or only this? No, we're absolutely going to critique uh, quite a bit more. Uh, Kareem, I know that you sent me an email. We will be moving on to yours here shortly, actually. You might be next up in the list. Uh, for those that don't know, every Friday we do critique live streams. And no, it's not just me working on one single piece. It's me looking at everybody that's in the queue here that has sent stuff in. And Kareem, yes, you are up next. Uh, Kareem says, I want to ask if you can critique my work. I uh, tried to make Kate, and I didn't like my work so much. Um, some things that I don't like, body and hair. And if you can give some advice for the face, I think it's good enough. It will be great. I uh, hope you can catch my stream. Well, it looks like you're here, so perfect. Good timing. <laughs> um, let's see, anything else here? If you have extra time, if you have extra time, can you check out my art station and give me some tips about how to improve my art? Um, I don't typically do like general tips on people's um, portfolios or anything like that. Uh, the objective of the critique uh, Friday session is to look at something specific and give actionable things that people can improve on instead of just general advice. I don't really like general advice. I think general advice is typically too general to ever be helpful. I, I would say that I think general advice is bad advice a lot of the time. Uh, but let's go ahead and load in Kareem's Z tool here, full body Z tool. And we can go ahead and take a look. And you also sent me an image. Uh, Kareem, I don't think you included who the concept is by here. Is this by? It says Shane Olsen in it. Uh, I'm not sure if Shane Olsen did the concept here, but he might have. Let me know. And let's import this. This might be something that Shane does for one of his classes. I'm not really sure. If somebody in chat knows, though, shout it out. Let's go ahead and import that puppy. And I will do some scaling to fix some stuff here. <laughs> All right. Let's see. What did I miss? Uh, Kalahari. It's Harris. Uh, the Pepper Witch I sent in today. Awesome. I think you might be next in the queue. Uh, where is the email for submissions? Just type in exclamation mark critique into chat and that'll pop up for you. I uh, need to change my nickname on Twitter. <laughs> or on Twitch, sorry. All right. Kareem, let's see what you got going on here, man. Looks like we got some subdivisions, which is very nice. That makes a lot of this uh, more more easy on myself. I am going to toggle off all of our poly paint to make this quite a bit easier on us. Um, and we can focus on form. So I think the first thing that immediately stands out to me is that there are quite a few proportional differences here in, in our character than, than what we see. For instance, for instance, if we look at the arm, the arm does not, first of all, the arm is quite a bit more thin than what you have. And second of all, the uh, additional form that you have transitioning here into the forearm is uh, not present in this concept. So I think what happens over time when you're sculpting is you do something one way a few times and you get in the habit of making it that way. Uh, and then in the future, when you're working on something else, you tend to make it the same way, right? So we want to avoid that. We want to break that habit. And we want to, essentially, I am going to, I'm going to break your stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to wreck it. I'm going to destroy all this. 
Uh, we're just going to smooth this out a little bit and go from there. We have, what do we got going on here? So you have some thickness going on in your geometry. I am going to do this. I'm going to step all the way up. Holy macaroni. All right, so we got 14 million polys. That is a lot for this, uh, a very inappropriately large number. So I'm gonna step down once and I'm gonna delete your highest subdivision level. Uh, mesh contains layers. Okay, then let's do this. Makes it very hard for me to work on stuff when it has layers. So I am going to bake, bake all your layers in. And then I'm gonna step down once, delete higher, and then I'm going to select your outer piece of geometry. Delete hidden. Delete hidden and run a close holes operation. So I'm just doing that for now. I know that uh, this is getting covered up here and that's probably not what you want. Uh, here, here, you know what? I'll do this instead. Because we're gonna be working on the arms here first. I'm gonna select just your arm I'm gonna split that off and have just your arm to work on. So uh, depending on what you're making this for, uh, I would say specifically in these arms, for instance, because the arm is never ever going to be seen inside of for the sleeve, especially since it's skin tight, there's no reason that this geometry needs to have thickness. Essentially by giving this thickness, you're doubling the poly count on this entire thing. So what I would do for something like this is typically fake the thickness or just fill it in. It just doesn't need to exist. For this, I'm just gonna fill it in. We don't want it. It's just getting in the way. It's just causing more problems. And after we kind of take care of the technical things here, we'll look back at the actual artistic side of things. Mainly fixing some thickness issues here, I think. So quick Dynamesh on that, and we are a sol at a solid piece of geometry and ready to move forward. So, first of all, proportionally, be looking for this stuff. We got an elbow right here, that's where her elbow is. Very faint, very hard to see, but that's hitting right at about the bottom of her rib cage. So, just looking at your arms, the elbow, the joint there feels very low, so pay attention to stuff like that. This might involve you um, reproportioning your character altogether, which I think is definitely a thing. You're feeling very thin in here. She is a very thin character, and we only have one concept to kind of go off of here, so it's kind of hard to tell, and it's a little bit tough for me to work on something like this because we, um, you know, we have um, thickness to the geometry. I think we can just roll this back here and I will temporarily just hide your sleeves. Just so I can actually get this in a workable state for myself so we can make big changes quickly. So I think there are some thickness issues here. I think there are some awkward proportional issues and form issues going on with the breasts. Um, the loop here, like the loop of this shape, doesn't feel very natural. Whereas opposed to what we're seeing in the concept, is, uh, you know, pretty natural breast shape. So here in the middle, you know, you want to either play with the form here, pull that up, as well as um, just adjust the shape of your breast, as well as, it looks like this is kind of floating in here from what I can tell. Yeah, so you got some like floating issues in here. So make that kind of wrap around that a little bit more naturally. It's really hard for me to show this stuff again just because this is so um, so high poly and also very, very tough to manipulate. Here, here's an example of where you did uh, something that I, I would do as well. You have terminated the geometry here because you know you're not seeing any of it. Same thing with a little bit of the thickness in there. It's not seen, it's pretty much only seen up here. There are some, you know, Dynamesh tricks that you can do to get uh, get that pressed in and uh, shaped up a little bit better. Wrapping down and around the hips. Um, take a look at this awesome curve that we got going on. Wrapping down and around here. Look at that really nice curve all the way into the knee. And then look at the other side of that leg, how it is countered with a more simple straight shape. 
So that is something that we really want to focus on. We're wrapping all the way down from up here on the hips. You've done this a little bit, but we want to get that nice rounded shape in here. I think the connection point here for the hips could be done a little bit better because it starts to get a little bit messy in here and a little bit depressed. I find that when I'm working on legs, splitting the, uh, or removing one leg while you work on the other so you can get in and work on the middle of that shape is gonna help you out a lot. Uh, the legs are also just more uh, thin in general than what you have going on here. They tend to, let's see, got a nice clean shape coming through here. Let me just clean up your surface a bit. Also look at the silhouette. We got a nice curve coming down here. So what do we want on the other side? A little bit more of a straight. The extra volume here that you have in the back feels very awkward. I would say in general, the, the major critique or major issue that I'm seeing here with this character is that the proportions aren't matching what I'm seeing in the concept as well as, um, you know, just general cleanliness in the silhouette is a, is a major issue, I would say. So pay attention to those few things, and I really think you've got some good stuff going on here. I think it'll just take a little bit more time to really push and clean this up and get it to a better place. For instance, look at the uh, silhouette here of this boot. If we look at the internal leg silhouette coming down from the knee, straight line into an internal convex curve, right? That's awesome. But what do we see on yours? We see just a rounded shape flowing all the way through here, around and then a little bit of an S curve into a straight. So pay attention to this kind of stuff and it's gonna really help you uh, create your characters and make them feel like it is the 2D representation of that character. I'm not gonna take the time to do all of these. I think uh, we got the point across with what I just said and a little bit of showing that off in the uh, upper portion of the leg. As well as looking at just general proportions, your face is too small, your character is too tall, um, a lot of thickness problems, you know, ankles are way too thick. Um, if it helps to align the image and just figure out, or I'm sorry, align your character, here are the legs and the head. So if I just draw a line here, here's where your knees are, here's where her knees are, and look at how thick your legs are compared to her legs. Uh, a few of the changes that we made here to the hips, to I would widen those hips out quite a bit more. I would lengthen the arms, uh, make the arms more thin, start to widen out the torso, increase the size of your head by probably 50, 75% maybe. And just a lot of the shapes that we're seeing in the head in general are um, not accurate to what I'm seeing in the concept. Uh, you do have some really good shapes going on here. Um, I would say in general the surface is a little bit messy, but overall you got some nice kind of round form going on in here. The problem is that her face is just so much longer than what you have going on in your little, little doodad here. So doing some work to lengthen that, pay special attention to the silhouette of her face, look at that cheekbone. Probably make sure your head's not getting too flat on top. Get some roundness in there. Looking at the profile, there's quite a bit more that you can do in the face and the body in general. Uh, this starts to feel like it doesn't have enough support back here for the back and butt. So either, it's probably gonna be a combination of pulling in the butt, maybe thickening up the leg and getting some more volume in the back. Let's see here. did it yourself without the course. Well, there you go. I, I don't know if, uh, again, if this is for um, Shane Olson's course. If someone can let me know in chat. Uh, that is the character Shane walks you through in his 3D character workshop. Thank you, thank you to Anor. So uh, Shane Olson, if you guys don't know, uh, awesome artist, go check him out. He also streams on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel as well. Two and Or is in his class right now. It's been uh, very good. Awesome. Uh, Kate Archer is the name of the concept artist, I believe. Thank you, Becker. Everybody go check out Kate Archer's work. Um, let's see. Great work for going it on your own. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Uh, let's make sure I didn't miss anything else here. Awesome. So again, remember that our objective here with the critique is, you know, I'm not trying to, to nail on anybody. I just wanna really drive this home. The objective here is to improve. It's not about getting your stuff on and saying, oh, wow, this is perfect. I only have one thing that I would change or two things. It's not a contest, right? The objective is to improve. So hopefully this has been helpful for you. Uh, and yeah, man, I think you've uh, done some good stuff here, like I said, for going it alone. I think there are just a few proportional things that I, w I would say take a step back and focus on proportions a little bit longer. Uh, let's see, in terms of how you've made our straps here and our belt, I'm not sure if you poly modeled these and then moved them around with your move brush or something. Uh, maybe not. That, that looks a little bit more uniform than I was thinking. Oh, maybe. I don't know. P so be careful with hard surface stuff that you're not, you know, getting it too out of whack. So it's really easy for us to have something that should be metallic and then, you know, we can warp it so easily in ZBrush. So just be careful of that. That's definitely an issue. Uh, in the hair, hmm, I would say maybe use some more simplistic geometry. This feels a little up towards the front, a little bit tentacly. What I would try to do is actually not start putting in if I were to sculpt this, if I were to like start over and do this from the beginning, I would probably keep this as a dynameshed piece of hair all together and just keep blocking out the shape. Let's see here, get that a little bit more. And then what I would do is start going into the uh, actual shape that I'm seeing here and just start breaking stuff here. So because I am trying to get that most basic shape, I want to keep my geometry low, as low as I can go. This is even too high here, so it's fine. I'm going to start pushing that, shaping it up, looking at the silhouette. Awesome, awesome. And just continue to shape that up. So start to do that, and then uh, after you get your hair in the perfect shape that you want, then I would say take it to the next level. It's much like um, when you're sculpting anything else, you wanna block it out first, focus only on the primary forms, the silhouette of the object, right? And then from there, you can start thinking about secondary shapes and breaking things up a bit more and going from there. But yes, I think that'll be it for this one. Again, proportions are your major concern. And then from there, I would just start cleaning up your surface as there are some things in here that are a little bit, you know, all over the place. If we look at that silhouette and kind of some of the extra stuff we got going on here. Just a little bit of move brush and some TLC and you'll be all good to go. Cool, cool, cool. Kate Archer is the name of the character, not the, uh, not the artist. I think Shane is the artist. All right, let us move on. To the next one here. Make sure we don't have any more. Again, if you guys want to get in for the critique today, it is finallygod at gmail.com. Shoot me a Z tool. And let's see, who is next? Nathalie. Nathalie Hernandez has a baby dino that we're going to take a look at. Let's load this up. Boom, baby dino, and you have an image for me as well, awesome. Let's import that. And go from here. Let's do some scaling, put this up here, and let's see what you got. I uh, really wanna thank you for your videos and tools, well, awesome, glad to be of help. Um, they've shared because they've helped me improve a lot. Kind of like critiques, very helpful. 
Uh, finally made a model that is looking closer to my drawing, so I thought to send it to you to make sure that I don't mess it up this time. <laughs> uh, I've attached the drawing that I made. It was a simple sketch that I thought would be simple to turn in 3D. Specifically need help with the legs. I've been trying to keep them as close to my drawing, but it's kind of difficult because my sketch is so simple. I guess I'd like to know, how would you approach modeling those legs? Thank you for the help and all the resources you've provided. No problem. Let's go ahead and get in here. Thanks a lot for the critique. No problem, uh, Kareem. I hope uh, I hope it's helpful for you. All right. Let's get in on our baby dino. Check out what we got going on. It is very simplistic, for sure. So when translating something from 2D to 3D, a little bit in the earlier stages of 3D, you start to put in, I would say, unnecessary form. And it's great that you made this in, um, in 2D so that you can try to translate it in 3D. I think that's a cool exercise. But I think what I'm seeing is that you've just pushed a lot of your shapes too far, as well as the fact that we really, really just want to take this a step back, simplify some of the form that you have in here, and start probably cleaning this up. So let's uh, let's begin, for, for instance, for example, if we were to just outline your character coming around here in the belly, you have a little bit of a curve up and then around the belly and a straight line up and then a little bit of a turn here. So you have probably an issue, I would say, with making this too long as well as uh, maybe even needing to move your head back a little bit. So here is what I'm going to do. You have a two subdiv model. I'm just going to put this on 5K. 5K, okay? I'm just gonna remesh this real quick. And just following up the shape of the head here, I think you have the head flowing too far back or the uh, shape of the hood of the dino here is a little bit too far back. Probably some combination of the two. So just paying special attention to your silhouette here, I'm gonna start cleaning up your form. Remember that we want to look at your silhouette. So we got this curve wrapping down and around a little bit like that. When you start to have this curve and then break it up, it starts to not feel quite as good especially for something like this. So what I'm going to do, because we want those legs to be nice and good and connect in a nice way, we wanna clean the rest of that up and get just a nice curve flowing through that whole thing. If anything, maybe your tail's a little bit too long. I don't know, I think it's fine. But looking at the tail, I would say, you've already done this in 2D, so you might as well do it in 3D. You got a curve on one side and a straight on the other. So pay attention to your, that silhouette of yours. Get that straight on one side or a little bit more straight then a little bit more curve on the other. Then you start to get that hump there. It starts to wrap up and around the body and up and into the shoulder region here. Next coming back a little bit too far for where we'd want this to connect anatomically. We'll just move that around. And I think what I'm going to do, whoops, is a little cranial surgery here and start shrinking this guy up a little bit. <laughs> that looks so derpy without the actual mouth on there. Uh, I think it's smart the way that you attach that mouth though. I would probably do something pretty similar. So uh, make sure you're looking at these extreme angles as well. It's probably getting a little bit wider there as it starts to go into where the hood would be. Just kind of what I'm interpreting off your 2D there. So let's see. Just looking at that silhouette, where we want that to be. A little bit more of a point on top of the head. I started to get that a little bit from the front there. Let's just kind of exaggerate that for a moment. Just so we make sure we get that in there. And then I'll work on knocking that back a little bit. So that's starting to feel a little bit closer. Let's take your little hood shape here. Maybe rotate this up and I think you're pretty good here on most of this. I 
I would say maybe there's some a few things that we can do here geometrically to clean this up. And then just to make this shape, you know, as you start to get more into secondary form, what you could do, actually I don't even need that mask. To start pushing this to the next level is start to get some flip up on the back of that. So I'm using a damn standard brush there or a similar brush. And then here I'll just use the default pinch brush. Start to pinch this in around here. Don't worry, we'll get to the legs here soon. <laughs> but I just want to give some general notes on this dyno. So then we can start to flip this shape. Start to get a wrap and then a curve up. So this is kind of the shape that we're looking for from the side. And the pinch will definitely help with that. And the way you have that, oh, okay, I see what's going on. All right, let me uh, dynamesh this, just because the pole up there is causing the geometry to want to smooth that direction. I was wondering why that wasn't smoothing that direction. But that's okay. Quick little pinch rooney here. And I think you can start to see that shaping up. So then from the three quarter here, you see how at the end of your curve, you have like this extra little swoop up there. So that's what I'm trying to achieve with that. So pay attention to those little things as well. And yeah, I think you'll be heading in a good direction with that. Um, realigning the spikes, obviously, I'm not gonna take the time to do that. Uh, let's see, around here, these little shapes here are, I, would, I might tackle this in a similar way, but instead of what you've done here, I think these shapes need to be quite a bit smaller, but also, uh, merged into the head so that you can start blending between those making it feel more like a um, more like it's integrated into uh, having the horn kind of like depressed and causing the skin to fold around that so blend that in shorten that shape eyebrows sure let's see like I said I think the mouth could be probably more short just to help with your silhouette here from the three quarter. Whoops. All this stuff here, pull in. I'd pull in even more actually. Get that to have a little bit more of an overhang like you do in your concept. A little bit more of a flat there. This shape, a little bit more flat, a little bit more simple. Might want to dynamesh a couple of these pieces just because they're hard to work with, with all the stretched polysphere geometry. Even if it's something low poly, if you're kind of new to ZBrush, one thing that you can do is after you dynamesh, let's taper this too, make that feel better. After you do that, if you want to get a more simple shape, you know, come down in and Z remesh to like 1K or 0.1, something like that, and uh, you should be good to continue manipulating from there. I uh, wish you had the vision for for details. Well, I mean, really it's just recognizing what's going on in the 2D and trying to translate that to 3D and thinking about fundamentals. It's just about, you know, practice. You get better at it with time. You too can do it with a little bit of time. Um, or a lot of it, probably. Probably more so. In, like, your cheeks over here, this is what I was talking about earlier when I said you've started to add form that's just not necessary. It's not apparent in the 2D. You know, if you want to take it further, this is yours, you can do whatever you want. But in terms of, you know, accuracy, you're, you're talking about, oh, I don't know how to do this for, because it's so simple. Well, you know, I think you've, your answer is to go more simple. You know, go as simple as necessary. Simple doesn't mean easy. Simple doesn't mean, you know, that it doesn't look good. Simple can look very good. And simple can be very difficult to achieve. Good simple. So I'm just looking at your silhouette from the front now and starting to round out that shape even more. I think he's starting to look a little bit better here in the face. A little bit more like what you got. 
You got like this um, kind of tucking in nature going here if we look at this shape. I think it's just the way that you've modeled this. So what we want to do, probably work on just pulling out this bottom piece, straightening this up. And getting that to feel like it's going to flow into that more naturally. I think that'll help you out. And then looking at the lower part of your eye, you know, it's pretty flat. It's kind of like he's glaring. So you got some cool stuff going on here for your eyelids. I would either redo these or um, possibly, oh, we, we never moved these back. I'm not too worried about it. I was just more concerned about the the major, major shape there, but I guess we can scoot them back real quick here. He was, sure, sure, <laughs> we can go there. So I would either redo these or instead uh, just kind of continue doing what I'm doing here and sculpt on the surface to start getting that kind of squinty shape there. Maybe start flattening that a little bit. The main thing that you got going on with the shape of your eyes, you have a flat on the bottom and top and then a curve on the side. So essentially, you know, flat, flat, curve, curve. So if you wanna do that with separate geometry like you were playing with there, go ahead. But it just wasn't uh, extremely accurate to what I was seeing here. So I would spend a little bit more time in that area as well. Just make sure that this wraps around here and feels like that's tight, making sense. Fill in the volume around here. Your geometry that you have, just the way that the way that you modeled this, I probably wouldn't tuck this in so much. What I would probably do, oh, you know what? I might even break that off a little bit on the bottom jaw, just because this is starting to warp quite a bit. It just makes it hard to work with. I don't think I would have done this kind of, you know, before you had this like wrap around and pull into there. It's just a little difficult to work with. So I'd try to find a little bit of a better way for handling that. You might even wanna, you know what I would probably do? I would probably just merge the upper portion of this mouth slash beak to the head, open up the mouth a little bit so that you can sculpt inside the mouth, close it up later, and you don't have to worry about that like dynameshing and sticking together right now. That's what I would recommend. Polly, Polly gone, very clever name, welcome. Uh, hey dude, just wanted to say I love your work and training materials. Well, thank you, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Lecture in game art, uh, and I have a question. Is there a way to get a discount on batch purchases from your gum road? Uh, not by default, but if you want to shoot me an email with what you had in mind, by all means, follygon at gmail.com. Shoot me an email and let me know. Uh, let's see... Uh, zero D or odd, odd one. I think it's supposed to be odd one. Let me know if that's how you're supposed to pronounce that. Uh, bought your zebra course and started it last night. It's so easy to follow. Even after a night, I'm a little more comfortable using it. Thank you. Awesome, man. I, uh, I appreciate that a lot. Glad, it, glad it's been helpful for you. And I hope it continues to be so. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what else we got going on here. The legs. We wanted to look at the actual legs because that was specifically what we were asked about. Um, I think in general though, a lot of that stuff will help um, help push you into the next level. So the legs, the legs, man. Like you said, they're very, very simple. Uh, you were kind of concerned about uh, how you were going to uh, do this. So the entire point of me going through and showing all that off was so that when we got to the legs, I think you already know the answer. If we look at your character and look at the silhouette of the shape of the leg, it comes down and it's just a little bit of a rounded shape that tapers into some straights. If we look at the legs currently, this like, is this another subtool? Yes, it is, okay. So let me reorganize your stuff here real quick and just kind of get this all in the same place. So what I would do is merge uh, these together. Actually, I would probably just delete the bottom part there. Polygon, thank you for the uh, follow, man, there. I appreciate that. 
um, either merge these together or just delete the bottom part, like, like right? It's, it's not there. We don't see it in the form. So just delete that all together. And then what you can do, there are you know, a million different ways you can clip stuff on the bottom. What I would do is probably stretch these a little bit further than what they need to be and then come back and clip them later. Just try to fit the main silhouette shape first. So from the front view, if we look at your shape right now, you have a curve coming down and hitting here and then going into a straight. If we look here, it's more of a gradual, like very gradual, I would say, very gradual curve. Uh, let's, let's just go point one all the way down to the very bottom of the list here. Very, very low poly. So a lot more of a gradual curve. There's even a little bit of some, like they're pointing forward a little bit too. From the back, there's a little bit more meat from what I can tell coming into uh, the curve of the shape there. And then what we wanna do, because we're only working from one image, whether it's your concept or someone else's, is we want to apply the fundamentals of what we already know to make that shape feel like the same. So we know that it's a little bit more flat in the front and a little bit more meaty in the back. So maybe from the outside, maybe we can get a little bit more meat, rounds out a little bit. And then on the inside, we can go a little bit more straight. So we're still simple. We have, you know, fit the concept fairly well. And the last thing that we want to do is just make sure that, you know, we're following where that connects at and blending that in well. So you have that little uh, cream colored patch on the bottom, kind of like runs up through there. It's not exactly where it is, but you know, close enough. So right about there is where those lines start disappearing in your form. So looking at your leg, what I would probably do is just make sure that this is going to blend in properly right around that area. Add a couple subdivisions just to get it a little bit more smooth. Again, there's a million ways to like clip stuff in ZBrush, but maybe you, know, you could use the transpose line. I just made a tutorial on that for my YouTube channel here just within the past week, within the past few days, I think. Uh, you can also hold Control and Shift, go up here, select any of these clips, slice, trim brushes, whatever you want to use, and go crazy with it. And then after that, we'll only do one leg, just so I can show you the process after this quick save is done. You know what? I'm actually going to turn off the quick save feature. We're just going to crank this up, because we don't really need it. Uh, let's grab your body. And then after, I would say, after you've gotten to a point where you're comfortable with the shape of your leg, you're ready to stick it on there, go ahead and merge them down, run in Dynamesh, Boolean, you know, whatever you want to do. I'll just do a quick Dynamesh here, 500. I think that's what I did earlier for the body. Looks good to me. And then you can start transitioning this into the shape here. Now, remember, we don't want this, you know, really tight connective point there, so we really want to blend this well. And it's typically easier to do that with subdivs. What's great is because we have these different polygroups here, we can actually zero mesh with polygroups turned on. There's this keep groups feature here. So I'll toggle that, and then I'm just gonna do the 5K remesh. I think that's maybe what we did on the body before. And what you will see happen is hopefully, hopefully this doesn't take too long, uh, we will get a poly loop or uh, uh, edge loop, whatever you wanna call it around the uh, different selections here for our different poly groups. So one for the leg, one for the body. You can be more specific with this. Uh, you can you know, create some stuff around the mouth if you wanna do that for when you blend this junk all together. Uh, all sorts of good stuff. It's starting to get a little pinchy and gross in there though. So there are some sliders that we can mess with. I think just for time here though, we are just gonna do a quick remesh without that turned on and then I can show you how to project and clean this up and then we will call it a day unless we have any additional questions. Uh, what is the next course? Can you give us a teaser? Uh, yeah, a trailer. <laughs> uh, essentially the next course, it's gonna be a, uh, a course where I, you know, it, it is a course that has pre-recorded lectures plus uh, um, some live elements incorporated into it, some project-based homework. It's essentially a six to eight week long course that goes through the entire process of sculpting up a character from nothing all the way to uh, a finished finished piece in uh, the same vein of 
this dude here. So I'll have more info on that once I get closer to that being finished. But um, yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be a lot of help. And I'm excited to share that with you guys. It is pronounced Odo, like Odo from DS9. I don't think I know Odo from DS9, but Odo, I will remember. The Fool Folly Package. <laughs> Saying, saying that sounds a little awkward. But uh, we have, <laughs> we've now Z-remeshed this. Yay, we have done it. Let's add a subdiv, control D, project, project all. Give that a second to project, and we'll just repeat that process maybe about uh, two or three times here. Uh, I'll do it just twice to save time, and I'll add an extra subdiv. So now what we've done is we've remeshed, and we have something at a... Uh, at a, at a similar polygon count, actually, but it does have subdivision levels, so we can step up and down through those and start at the lower subdivision levels, you know, maybe using a trim dynamic brush, maybe a very gentle smooth brush, maybe make sure that's blending in well through all this, and start to work on this area more now that that is connected up. So that is how I would handle the legs, I hope, uh, and a lot of other things, I guess. <laughs> but I hope this has been helpful for you, and I uh, look forward to seeing what you, uh, what you end up doing with this. He's a cute little dude. I like him. Cute little dino boy. Yeah, we'll just spend a little bit more time maybe trimming up and filling this. Same basic process for the rest of this, like if you were to merge down the... Um, the head, the everything else. What did I just do? What what got? What is this? Is this an old piece? Old merged body, of course. Looks like there's a bunch of old stuff here. Forget it. <laughs> Forget I turned anything on there. Uh, so yeah, same process for merging that rest. Uh, the rest of that. Good luck to you. Gold speed. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any more cues. Maybe we can see this guy in a future critique. Here, I'm gonna try toggling off all the old. Why'd you give? Why'd you give me all the old stuff? Come on, man. How am I supposed to? How am I supposed to do anything? Here, we'll just toggle that off just so we can get to a place where we can see where this was and where we are now. Hopefully, we'll see here in just a moment. Got a bunch of lids in there that you were probably experimenting with. Looks like you experimented with uh, slicing up a sphere as well as using some curved brushes, so good on ya. That sounds like a lot of work. All right. Oh boy, more, more, more. Okay. <laughs> there we go, I think that's close. So let me load that back in from where we started, just for you guys so you can see where we have uh, come from and where we have gone. So really pay attention to that silhouette. If there's, if it's not in the form, I'm starting to see here in the neck that where you have that blending in, I think this is tapering way too much. I would start to fill that in. But take some time, look at that silhouette, really build that up. Remember that you know you have to do step one, basic shapes before you can move on to step two. So before you start getting in and breaking up your silhouette with more complex shapes, Make sure that the primary shape is matching up first. I think you um, you got that in 2D, but you know trying to translate that, that to uh, to 3D is, is a lot more difficult for sure. Uh, but cool, 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 cool. Good luck to you, man, and let's move on to the next one. Deep Space Nine is on uh, Netflix. I think I've seen Deep Space Nine uh, a couple times. I think it's on. I, I think I saw it on YouTube. I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. Next up is Harris. Harris was on the critique uh, last last Friday, I think. Let's load up Harris's new model. All right. So you still got the same material on that head. I'm guessing this is like a custom material that you have that I simply do not. But we got that and let me see here. I will load up your reference, which you have provided for me. I 
I'm actually going to turn my quick save back on. That was weird. Oh, I cannot select. Oh no, it was just being stupid. All right. So, Harris, you have made some fantastic progress on this from last week. If I can find your old one, I should still have it here. Um, just so everybody else can see. All right. So here we go. Here was round one. I think this was last week uh, or the week before. But there's that. And here's where you are now. Ooh, we got a big old cowboy hat as well. So I think you've uh, fixed a lot of the shapes in your face. I think there are still some issues there and we'll take a look at that. But I think you've done a uh, good job on fixing a lot of the major proportional issues that uh, you were kind of suffering from there. As well as a lot of that from the profile, which I think was one of my, uh, one of my major concerns on that last one. Uh, just because things were looking a little bit flat here I think maybe there's a little bit of that still going on, but you've done a fantastic job of uh, taking this to the next level. So everybody give a round. Give a round for Harris. Good job, Harris. All right. Now let's beat the crap out of this thing and stamp it into the ground. No, we're not going to do that. I am going to say the first thing that I actually noticed was your cowboy hat because you didn't have that before. I was like, oh, nice. Got the hat. Or maybe not a cowboy hat. Um, not sure what kind of hat that is. I think the thing that really stood out to me first on the cowboy hat here, my brush doesn't continue to freak out on me, is the, ooh, let's split this up into some different groups so we don't break everything at once. We wanna break things piecemeal. Uh, so give me, oh, you know what? You got some other parts up there for your hat, don't you? Give me some of this. Oh no. Let me uh, run in auto groups real fast. Well, bam. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so looking at your hat, make sure that you're getting this rounded shape here. Right now, it's not really matching that curve at all, so pay attention to that. So look for that nice, clean, rounded curve. There we go, we're starting to get a little bit closer with a little bit of move brush. The next thing that I uh, saw in the hat was these points here in the where the hat curves. Yours are a little bit more rounded. What I would recommend doing is using something like a pinch brush and coming through maybe with like lazy mouse turned on or something like that. And then, you know, you can start to work on uh, pinching those shapes and, and getting that to the next level. Uh, because of the way that this is shaped, you might have trouble doing that. You might have what I just, uh, you might have um, experienced what just happened to me there. Uh, so it might be easier to drop down the poly count really low on this and just control where your edge loops are hitting and try to like bevel the edge in that specific area so that it creases tighter in, uh, in that specific point. That is what I would do. You could probably just break these off as a separate piece and then merge them back down later on. So you could split that off, have your little cinnamon roll here and then, um, you know, I don't, I, I probably won't be able to get a super clean result very quickly, but just for example, Z remesh all the way down as low as we can go. I would actually probably make this one-sided as well. I would probably do this with a plane now that I think about this more. So for uh, example, let me do this real quick just so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll just grab a cube very quickly and I will grab, um, let's, let's see, one side of this cube. So here is my plane. It's a nice plane, right? Let me turn on perspective because I can't see where the hell that went. So here we have our plane and just to do this quick, I'll cheat some edge loops really fast. Let's start to turn this way, bam, start to turn that way, bam, all right, so there we go. We got the first basic curve in there. So when you smooth that out with a subdivision or dynamic smooth, it will naturally want to blend between those shapes and will interpolate between those. But if you use your Z modeler brush, hover over an edge, hold the space bar, 
select a bevel edge loop complete and bevel that. You can make that a little bit more tight. It will still stay rounded, but the shape will pinch in more tightly there. You could get the same effect with a crease. A crease would be a little bit too hard of a shape, I think. But continue to do what I just did there. This didn't take me very long at all to do this. And then after you're done, use your Z modeler brush, hover over a face, hold the space bar, select extrude all polygons, and just run an extrusion to give that some thickness. Now when you do this, it might flip your normals, so make sure that you come down into display properties, turn off double, and make sure that's flipped. Just make sure that your polygons are facing the correct way. All right? Cool, cool, cool. So that's how I would probably do that. And then after I'm done making that shape, I would merge that back into the hat. Let's undo on your hat to get back to a place where we had it. So hopefully that helps you out. Uh, let's look at some of the rest of this since we're still talking about the hat, right? Uh, you've started to get some of these secondary shapes in here. For this part of the hat, I know you're kind of low poly mode, but let's see, I would, let's see, maybe, I don't know what scale this is at, eh, it's fine. So I would get a little bit more resolution in here for this block out phase, and while you're trying to get some of these like tighter creased areas, you can use something like a pinch brush or a uh, mech brush, it's up to you, and start to really look at that silhouette where those points are. Maybe you could use like a move brush with AccuCurve turned on to get like a really sharp pull out. There's a bunch of ways to do this kind of stuff just to make sure that you're fitting the silhouette nicely. And so what I'm seeing here, you know, if we look up at the silhouette, we got a one, two, so one point, two point, and then a flat. So look at this line here. See how we got like a pretty much a straight shape, if anything, a curve in. So just be paying attention to that stuff. Look at that silhouette. Pay attention. Pay attention to your silhouette. And up here, maybe a little bit more pinched. Yada, yada, yada. You get, you get the gist. So pay attention to that silhouette. Shape that up a little bit better. And I think you will be headed in the right direction. All right, let's toggle off the hat. And we'll toggle off that as well. Uh, modeled the hat inside Blender. Uh, shape was not good where hat meets the head, so I had some trouble with topology and needed to add volume. That's why I used Dynamesh and destroyed the topology. No problem. I think you, uh, if you Dynamesh that a little bit higher, uh, just so you can start getting those you know, tighter positional points, you'll be good. Uh, for something like this, where this is like a little misshapen, I didn't really see that. Um, I don't know. I would probably... I'd probably just get rid of some of this and then, ooh, floaters, I hate floaters. Let me delete those. Uh, I would probably just re, uh, re kind of plane that off and then start to, you know, however you want to do this with like a mask or, or whatever. I'm just doing this very sloppily and lazily to start pushing that in and getting this to fit better over the head. And then after you do that, then you can merge this together with, um, where'd the rest of your hat go? With the rest of that and start blending between those shapes. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. It definitely looks like you uh, took a note from me in terms of like lining up your head with your uh, image there. Uh, there's, it's definitely a lot closer here in a lot of regards. In some regards, though, maybe not. So let's take a look here at the face and see what we can change. So the first thing that really stands out to me is the lips and some other shapes in the face. These lips are just not what I am seeing in your reference. Uh, the lips here are much more flat. You have kind of... I see this a lot uh, when people are kind of newer to sculpting lips. They kind of tend to make, you know, a little bit of a duck face with their lips. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna smooth out your lips and simplify that quite a bit to get that closer to what I'm seeing. So destroy some stuff to fix some stuff. As we're wrapping around here, the volume of your cheekbones is just, you know, independently by itself a little bit much. So if you want to do that, I think that's fine because I do see a little bit of that going on, but you know, you want to blend this into the rest of your face nicely. 
Make sure that you're getting some nice wrap. Let's see, where's your jaw back here? It looks like you fixed some of that. Let's see, let's split this up a little bit more. Uh oh, I don't know what that is. I think you got another floater up there. Let's see here. I'll look at the three quarter view. If we look at this shape versus what I'm seeing in the reference over here from the three quarter, still just too much volume and we're getting a nice kind of curve here. So nice like rounded shape. So I'm gonna knock this back some more. I try to sculpt on one side and then look at the other in the three quarter view. I find that to be helpful sometimes. Getting a little bit closer there. Make sure that around your lips, where that you know duck duck face was. When you do something like this, it tends to you know give this loop uh, con uh, concave effect to the rest of your mouth around that. So what we want to do is now that I've pushed that back, we still have that in there a little bit. So make sure that we're, you know, supporting this form in here enough. And in terms of your actual mouth here, coming back through and just following the shape that I'm seeing here a little bit more. So I think you could spend a good amount of time getting these up to a nice place, but just for something quick so that we're not, you know, super duck lippy, something like that. And uh, continue, continue pushing, continue pushing on that. Uh, up through here, definitely soften this kind of plane break that you have going on. It's just not apparent in the 2D at all. Same thing on the nose. I don't really want to see this super sharp plane break here. So I'll just soften that out a little bit. And let's start reshaping your nose some more. So we look here, see that little line? That indicates that it probably doesn't dip in maybe as much as you have. Let's play with that shape a little bit, you know, a little bit more cutesy, a little bit more small. And a little bit more work around your nostrils and I think you'll be in a, uh, a lot better place for that. Also, nose is probably just too, too wide in general, more so towards the tip of the nose than anything. But uh, a bunch of those things I'd take a look at and uh, push even farther than I've done here. So uh, on everything here, I'd you know, take this quite a bit further. Let's see. Uh, other than that, hmm, what else? The shape of our eye. And the eyelash, or this anime style eyelash. For this, let's split this off. I don't really think you need the eyelid unless you're gonna merge that into the head later and like flatten out between that shape. Also pay attention to the, I'm just seeing this since I went solo mode real quick. The shape of your head up here, um, you got, it's just way too tight, way too pinched up here. So I would just spend some time rounding out this shape, however you wanna do that. Just to make the, um, it, it's also too narrow. There's a few things here, but. That shape isn't super appealing, so maybe try thickening up the sides, get a little bit more rounded here. I'll spend some time on that. Let's see. Remember that anime heads are, or this style of head is typically pretty big. So you wanna have typically like a pretty large head with a pretty small face. For reference, if you're you know wanting to see a reference in 3D, if you go into your light box. Oof, 
quick save. Come on. If you go up in your light box under project, there is a demo anime head that you can look at. Turn that back up. Thanks for the tip with the Z modeler. No problem, man. All right. So that's already starting to feel much better uh, in the shape of the head. I would spend even more time on this, but because we want to move on, we will stop messing with the shape of your head. All right. So just so you can see the, uh, the difference there between what I did versus what you had. So see how that feels tight and flat and pulled in there. And just starting to get some more volume in there. Pull that up a little bit. Starting to feel more appropriate. All right, and then in the eye area, I would honestly pull in quite a bit around some of this. Let's see, maybe some more pinching here just to get this plane to change. There's some odd flow for the geometry going on in some of this. Uh, but other than just making that feel more integrated there, which I think is necessary, like this this piece of geometry, I don't think this needs to exist. I would just delete that. This is what I wanted. Give me these. I'm gonna try doing a really low Z remesh on this shape because when it's dynamashed, it's very hard to work with. But when it's Z remeshed, you can get a little bit of some better edge flow. And when you smooth that, it looks a lot nicer. You could also, after doing that, come through and use the Z modeler brush, delete edge loop, and delete maybe about, let's say, every other edge loop for this, for now. And what this will do is it'll let the curve interpolate between a lot, uh, a more simple shape, more simple curve, right? Well, not that one. And what ends up happening, we get a nicer, cleaner curve through there. It already looks a million times better than what you had before. Uh, just pay attention to where that starts to disappear. If you want to see what that looks like more graphically, very quickly, just apply a uh, like Skin Shade 4 black material to that. And then you can kind of toggle that on and off if you need to while you work. Let's see. You could maybe play with the thick to thin a little bit more. And then just the shape of the eyes. I wouldn't make these flat. I would instead make them more rounded. And from the side here, probably. I'd probably go rounded or more rounded, so I would um, soften the transition that you have there. I don't know if you have subdivs, so I'm just going to do this really quick. Quick Zimra Mesharuni. Oh boy. And then what I would probably do is just hand paint on the eyes, or if you want to extract some geometry for them, yeah, whatever, whatever floats through your boat, whatever you want to do. So I think uh, for this style, I think round would definitely make more sense. You might want to squash them even a bit more. So if I'm looking at this from the top, it feels like there's a little bit of an angle out this way. Mm, you know what, I think it's fine. You can squash that more if you want, but I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Uh, but yeah, I would say that's probably enough for now. I think I've, I've given you enough homework. <laughs> Um, anything else that like really sticks out off the top of my head other than what I've mentioned already. You've done a fantastic job of uh, improving this, so I do applaud you for that. There's maybe a few things here in the jawline that you can play with, get that a little, a little bit nicer. Hmm. Cool, 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 man. Well, as I said, <laughs> you're gonna have to, after you change the shape of the head, you're gonna have to change quite a few other things as well. So let's see here, what's that? Uh, 
Oh, and uh, a quick uh, comment on the poly paint and stuff that you're doing here. Try using the skin shade form material. I think um, if you're gonna sample some colors from here, especially, you'll get some some pretty nice results. Uh, just to show you, let's see, skin shade four. Looks like you actually already hand painted the eyes. I did not see that. So just so you can see what something like a skin shade four would look like. Here, I'll do the actual skin shade four material. So here we are. Here we were. Bam. And here we are after some tweaks and changes. Uh, definitely do a better job than I did. More so, you know, do as I say and a little bit as I do, I guess. Uh, it's hard for me to um, sculpt on this and talk and critique and all at the same time. So hopefully that has been helpful for you. And I think we have one, uh, one more already in queue. But other than that, uh, I don't think there's anybody else in queue. So if you guys want to get in for today, shoot me an email. Uh, type in exclamation mark critique in the chat for instructions. And we will move on to the next one. Uh, Dasan says, I like the way you use the pinch brush. Well, thank you. Thank you, man. I use it uh, for a lot of different things. I'll use it to help like plane out different shapes very gently. Use it to help guide my surface. I also use like the alt pinch to help do that as well. As well, just for a bunch of different things. I think I was using it around here in the eyes to help like change the plane there. But yeah, man, it's a good brush. It's good stuff. Uh, man, I thought I was getting some progress. You absolutely did. Did you not hear what I said at the beginning? Man, you uh, you crushed it. Um, here, here we are at. Here's where you were before. And here's where you are now, like the, the progress, like I said, I applaud you for it, you did awesome. And again, the uh, objective, nothing's ever finished, man. Nothing is ever finished. It is only, uh, what, what, what do people say? Uh, it's only abandoned, right? Uh, there will always be more that you can do. There will always be more improvements that you can do. Every time I finish a piece, even for me, I'll look back at it a week later and I'll be like, ah, should have done that. Should have put in a little bit more effort there. Could have completely changed this area. Could have done this as like a, a completely different technique. Like, I, nothing's ever finished. Nothing is ever perfect. Happens to everybody. <laughs> Thank you, man. I hated the duck face. <laughs> well, uh, again, hopefully it's been uh, been helpful for you. Let's uh, Let's move on to the next one. See who we got here. Uh, Dasan, Dasan sent us something. This uh, here is a base mesh that I'm making. I intend it to be stylized, not realistic. Trying to get the torso right. Uh, all right, so let's download this. I don't think I have a folder for you, Dasan. Not yet, at least. We will here shortly. Let's see. Ooh, where'd that go? Oh, downloaded it twice somehow. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, bam, that's right. That's right, you uh, had the masking issue. And it looks like it's still up here on the head, actually. Uh, so again, just to get rid of that, control, click, and drag. And if you can't see it, if you mask off a part of your mesh, it should appear. Or just, you know, control, click, and drag to clear your canvas. All right, cool, man. Well, let us take a look. Specifically, you said, um, trying to get the torso right. So I think we can look at the torso and maybe a few other things here. Yes, yes, Dasan is actually the last one in the queue right now. So if somebody else wants to get in, uh, now is the time. Uh, yeah, so you didn't send me a reference. Uh, you just kind of said it's a stylized character. I think that's fine. Um, we'll look at the... Can I reconstruct anything here? No, I cannot. All right, we will look at this mesh. Uh, just because it's going to be a little bit easier to manipulate, I think. With it split up and everything. Oh, what do we got here? Let's take a look. Got some hair, some hair up top, blocking it out. Cool, cool, cool. Let's see. 
I think the first thing that really stands out to me uh, in this character proportionally, just looking at this, is how long your legs and arms are, and maybe even your torso a little bit. Typically, if I draw a line all the way down through here, I want that central circle to be around the uh, pelvis point. I want the uh, around the crotch, I would say, somewhere around there. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do first up here, we're going to break some stuff, but that's okay. We love breaking. We love breaking. I'm just going to squash and probably mess up your feet as well if I do it that way. So here, we'll do it this way. I'm just going to stretch up your legs a little bit. And slide up your feet. Whoops. Come on, feet. Go up. All right, so that's starting to feel a little bit closer. I would also recommend not uh, sculpting your feet in that pose. Uh, unless you are specifically going to give your character high heels later, you might be doing that. Even if that's the case, though, I think it starts to really mess with your proportions for your character, and especially when you're sculpting this in kind of a neutral, more relaxed state, uh, it's hard to sculpt feet like that, and it's hard to, um, like for instance, you know, just the plane of your feet here, it's hard to get that perfectly flat, and your toes aren't aligned properly, so this kind of stuff, uh, just sculpting your feet flat tends to, tends to help out a lot for me, and I think it'll help you out a lot as well. So give it a shot. And proportionally, we can start looking at this a little bit better. Uh, next up, let's see. Let's look at your arms. Done this in an interesting way for your uh, your breakup. Let's get a little pivot point up here and rotate down. Uh, I would say that your the length of your arms is pretty good. What I like to see for the length of my arms. Um, I want that elbow to typically hit at the bottom of the rib cage, belly button-esque area, and I want the wrist to be around the crotch. You should be able to, when standing up, your character should be able to like grab their crotch, essentially. <laughs> so uh, I think after the leg change there, that is uh, feeling a lot better proportionally. From the profile, uh, your chest gets really kind of thick through here. Uh, I see this a lot in... Um, like since you specifically asked about the torso, I see this a lot when um, people start to pull out that like basic egg, egg shape of the rib cage. It just gets a little bit too thick here, especially once you start merging down the breasts and everything else. So let me go select rectangle. And I'm gonna take all this, split this off. We're gonna make this a separate object. Split off the breasts. And let's try to make this feel a little bit more natural. I think in general, there are some weight issues here with the character, not feeling super balanced and maybe a little bit too thick in certain areas. So remember, we were talking about some of those fundamentals earlier and one of those fundamentals that we like to look for in uh, our shapes, in the silhouette of our shapes a lot of the time, is straights versus curves. Having one side that's a little bit more complex and one side that's a little bit more simple so I think I'm just gonna start flattening out the back of your leg here. And you know, there's definitely some work here that we can do with the butt and everything else. We'll be looking at the torso extensively, but let's get the weight of your character feeling good first. The uh, legs down here feeling too thick for me. I think if you're going to do that, just make sure that they're not feeling exactly the same proportionally as your upper leg. If that's the case, things start to, um, it just starts to feel like one large parallel tube. And we don't like that. Nobody likes that. But maybe play around with that a little bit. I think you're cool to get, like, if you want to go crazier with the curve, I think that's awesome. Uh, just make sure that for this shape, you know, it's, it feels just like it's inflated at the top. Whereas more so we want, you know, intentional kind of silhouette shapes here. So take a look at that. I think that'll help you with the weight of your legs. If we go into Transpose Master here, we can modify everything at once. And take a look at what we got. Let's uh, turn off, whoops, I went in my arms. Hmm, we'll do this real quick. Polygroup just the arms so I can turn those off. And look at our character from the side. 
So, um, a few things. One of the first being that we like to get this long, uh, large, kind of nice S-curve throughout the body. Um, yours is, I think, a little bit too complex. Uh, and it ends up, you know, not having the major shape of that down very well at first. So I think there's maybe a few things here that you can do to make this character feel a little bit more on balance. If we look at the farthest point out for that leg, it makes it feel like the character is almost leaning forward a little bit too much and possibly like a little bit top heavy. It's kind of hard to tell with your toes right now. I might fix those just so I can see this a little bit better. But let's just grab your torso, your breasts, and I'm just gonna use my move brush and butcher some stuff real quick, as we do, as we do here. Let's see. And then as you do this, the position for your arms is going to change quite a bit as well. We'll probably be and we'll probably end up sliding these back some more. Let me see. Let me play with the rotation there. Uh, again, I would say try to sculpt your, st uh, your stuff a little bit more relaxed. I mentioned this earlier. Uh, similarly with uh, Benjamin Franklin's hands, uh, very stiff, very straight, right? So instead of doing something like that, what you have right now, the stiff, straight, open palm, I would say just hang your hand down at your side, like in, in the flesh world, <laughs> and uh, look, at, look at how your hand is uh, posed and then sculpt your hand in a similar kind of, you know, just kind of dangling kind of pose there. Uh, I would say the angle of your arms is fine if you wanna work at that. Uh, I typically don't work at my with my arms down at my sides. Uh, I find that to be a little, a little frustrating. Being able to get under the armpit and everything else for this is very nice. All right, so look at the weight of your character. Spend a little bit more time, obviously, than I've done here but I think that will uh, definitely help get you headed in a good direction there for sure. Uh, another thing, we'll go out of Transpose Master just so we can look at a few other things here. Look at your shapes through a cross-section view. So I can see this already. I'll turn on double so that I can, so that I can show you guys. But uh, looking at your leg shape, Look where uh, it's like most um, most protruding here. This sharp hit that you have up towards the front, and I'll just crease it to exaggerate it even more, is um, you know not what we would naturally see here in this shape. So let's um, I'm gonna go through and just trim that down a little bit. And it's fine to have that volume there, but I think we want to shift that to the outside and wrap that more around here. I think that's gonna help you out a lot. Totally cool to get some good meat on your legs, but you know, another thing that we want to look at when we're thinking about curving a shape is to make a shape a little bit more visually interesting. Instead of putting the hit or break of that curve in the very middle of that shape, if we put that in a, a little bit of an offset position, instead of right smack dab in the middle, we start to already create a little bit more of a visually interesting shape. So you can maybe get some more volume up there and then bring that down. So the difference here is instead of being um, you know, similar all the way through, now we've got a little bit more of a hit up top and then a fade down into the bottom. So this also go, uh, like leads into another principle which is called thick to thin tapering shapes. And that's exactly what I was talking about in your legs in general with them feeling very parallel. Uh, so, you know, Try to avoid parallels if you can, and try to get some more of that thick to thin taper going on there. If you want to exaggerate that and push that even further, you could probably do some more stuff down here in the knee region. I'm just kind of pushing and pulling around real quick, but you can probably start to taper that even more. Cool, cool, cool. I think the same exact notes uh, on the arms as the legs. So let's take a look up here. Uh, rib cage, too high up here for show rib cage sits uh, a lot lower than I thought originally when I was you know getting started in some of this stuff and I still typically put it too high and have to change it later uh, the basic shape of the rib cage when I'm trying to make this is 
egg shaped. Uh, looking at your silhouette here as we wrap around, it starts good, but then it starts to get a little round S and then S curve back again. So it's getting a little crazy here. So to compensate for that, let's just split this off. I'm just gonna remesh this really low. I'm just gonna do a 1K remesh. It's gonna get a little bit more simple, but we want to work on the most simple form. So 1K all the way down, please. Here we go. Here we go. Cool, cool, cool. So taking a step back, or you know what? Did you have subdivs on that? No, you did not. That looks like it's dynameshed. So make sure that you're getting that rounded, nice silhouetted egg shape in there. Maybe find uh, an example of someone else's stylized character. See if see what they've done with their ribs. Obviously, a little bit more pulled out towards the back for that basic kind of trapezius shape, which you have in there, which is great. Let's see. Taking a look at some of the rest of this. You might want to get a little bit more of a plane break, uh, essentially where the trapezius is back here. So instead of having a uh, straight or a singular curve all the way through here, instead try to uh, break this up. Look at some anatomical references for essentially where these clavicle hits are. I'm just kind of sketching these in really quick with the pinch. But try to find that, and then I think you can get uh, a little bit of a nicer shape. Uh, it doesn't have to be quite as pinched as what I have here, but we can soften up between those there. Uh, just so chat doesn't get away from us. Um, thanks, man. Grateful for the work you are doing for us, especially because I'm learning alone in 3D and don't have to ask someone and don't have someone to ask for advice. Uh, one more time, thank you. No problem at all. That's the whole reason we're doing this. Help out you guys as much as we can and uh, even for those not getting their stuff critiqued I think it's helpful to just see some of the changes that somebody else would make uh, let's see uh, Kira what's going on how you doing welcome back let's continue on here so lower that rib cage break let's see let's just put in a little bit of a tighter pinch here so I can see where that is and I think the shape here, you know, if we look at the silhouette, I'm not, I'm not really digging that too much. So what I want to do is start to either flatten this or just make the whole thing a little bit more rounded. What you've started to get in here with the pec transition is good. I think you'll do better with this shape once you merge the breast into the, uh, the rest of the torso here. So maybe, you know, hold off on this shape a little bit until you do something like that. I find it easier to do that myself. Uh, this is actually a little bit of a tough area. So the pec muscles, uh, they um, slap onto your humerus. They go up under your deltoid and slap into your, or connect onto your humerus bone, your upper arm bone. There's a ton of stuff that actually connects right there. Uh, a bunch of muscles from your, your, your back, your teres major and minor, and then a couple others from your clavicle. But um, yeah, so this is a tough area. Make sure what I like to do is when I'm blocking this shape out, like I said, I typically merge the breast together and then start to do this. But I'll maybe like pinch in a little bit there just to make sure that I have kind of a, a line set so that from here down, I, I mentally know that this is the roundness of the ribs here. We want to keep that round. But then up here, we can maybe start to um, dip that in a little bit for where that, that kind of fades in. You got a few other, what is it, your sartorius muscles coming through here. All this kind of adds to that rounded shape wrapping around the ribs. I don't know, maybe you can like pinch this up if you're you're having trouble getting that nice roundness in there. But let's see. Other than that, after you spend some time cleaning that bad boy up, merge down your boobles. I would say that the weight of these isn't feeling super great. The bigger they are, the harder they fall. So let's see. Uh, I'll just do a quick remesh here with 1K. Uh, if you are going to be doing clothing or something like that, uh, I recommend, you know, obviously pressing them a little bit more together for a brawl. But if you're just doing like a nude base, think about 
gravity a little bit more. And then once you get the basic shape into a little bit of a nicer place, what you can do is merge them into your body and start working on this transition here. I'd say, you know, basic shape here, obviously teardrop shape, which you have, but as something that is very fleshy, again, remember, think about gravity, as it gets, uh, you know, lower towards the bottom of that shape, it tends to have more of the weight there. So if we're thinking about straights and curves and all that good stuff, that means that typically it's gonna be a little bit more flat on top, and it doesn't have to be super, you know, perfectly flat, but what we wanna see typically is a little bit more of a flat shape and then where that breaks right around like nipple area you could say uh, we start to have a little bit more of that weight in the bottom and you can do this however you want you can do this after you merge it together really it's up to you but just focus on that and think about gravity gravitas and I think you'll be headed in a good direction you can maybe play with these for a while and shape them up I'm not gonna continue playing with your boobies though. That's a little awkward. All right, let's uh, look at the rest of our torso here. So let me just turn this off so I can look at your silhouette. And let's turn off our arms as well. I'm gonna split these bad boys. All right, cool, cool, cool. So. You know, we got the pillars of the back, uh, back here, which you do have in, that's great. Typically, I, I would say just merge these together. I think you've done a good job of figuring out where that plane break is for your hips, but I would say now is the stage at which I would start to merge that together and either block that out more or start defining that plane break a little bit more. There's so much that you can do here with stylization and the, the variation of the shapes here on the hips. Just kind of depends on your preferences. I've done, you know, super kind of crazy stylized where it's just like straight line coming down into leg transition. There's a lot of different options here, but yeah, play around with it. Rebel Defost, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it greatly. Welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, play around with your hips. I kind of just dynamesh these together really fast. Let me do another Z remesh so that I can actually work with this. And think about plane breaks. Think about plane breaks, which I will point out once this is done. All right. Yes, no, no more playing with the with your boobies. We'll, we'll move on. So uh, without thinking about the belly button here, I wanna see, you know, coming down across the hips there, it's typically uh, a nice plane break there. I think you got some of this down nicely. Um, typically a plane break around the abs, flowing back into the oblique area around here. Let's see, which you've kind of already started to sketch in. Back here, I was noticing you had like a little bit of a dip in here. I would say just kind of plane that uh, or round that back out. Play with that shape a little bit more. Get that feeling nice and clean. Don't want to needlessly complicate your shape if you don't need to. And coming down into the butt. Everybody loves the butt. That's why we're all sculptors. This area back here is just too tall here. It's gonna be a combination of, it's gonna be a combination of lengthening your rib cage quite a bit, but also shortening your torso shape here. So there's a few things that we can do here. Let me just get a quick like pinch plane break here a couple times. I would push this even further than what I'm starting to do here. Let's leave that like that. 
Take a step back for a moment. Oh no, too many things. Go away. Turn on perspective so we can get a view here. Maybe shorten those legs even a bit more. Ooh, woof. No thank you. Looking at this, yeah. Make me want to put more meat on these legs up towards the top. If you're going to have a big butt on a character, you need to have a large amount of weight to support that in the, uh, or a large amount of meat in the legs to support that weight. And let's see, butts are always tough because you know you're working on something that's going across the symmetrical axis. What I have done in the past is you can work on one side at a time and even use like your move brush. Ooh, nope, don't do that. Like back face masking or you know just a normal move brush. It's really up to you. And after you maybe get that weight feeling a little bit better, what you can do is run a mirror and weld operation, which mirrors from the positive to the negative axis, and that can start to at least you know get the connection point there, also known as the butt crack, uh, feeling a little bit better. Let's see, in terms of other planes here along the butt, I would say same thing as uh, your breasts, same comment. Think about gravity, right? So probably a little bit more straight on top, and then we get into where most of the weight of that is. So think about that. Coming down there, and yeah, cool, cool, cool. I think just in general, like I said, be looking at that silhouette, thinking about tapered shapes, thinking about straights versus curves, thinking about um, cleaning up some of, here, let's load in your old one, I guess. Oof, oof. There's a crash, our first crash, that's okay. I'll take this time to mention, if you guys want to get your stuff critiqued here on stream, shoot me an email, follygon at gmail.com, and you too can get your thing, your big thing critiqued here on stream. Oh no! <laughs> I screenshotted the window of ZBrush, but it accidentally screenshotted this stupid termination message. That's dumb. Oh, well. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's all right. Hopefully that has been helpful for you. I might be able ZBrush project that probably only has uh, that, most, that most recent object. Actually, it looks like it just saved me. Wait, was that a document? No, oh, that was a document. Okay, I was like, what the hell? Uh, we'll try to open that one more time. I have a feeling that it's probably just gone. It's not a big deal. I think uh, the uh, the uh, in real time information was probably more helpful than looking here at the end. Did we get? Did we get it? Oh, we might have. Huzzah! Good job, ZBrush. Good job with the quick save. All right. So again, look at your proportions. Uh, pay attention to straights versus curves. Look at that silhouette. Think about your character's weight. Think about tapered shapes. Uh, we didn't. Ooh, whoops. <laughs> we didn't really look at your character's head. Uh, let me see real quick. Do we have anything else in the list right now? If we do not, we will uh, make this the last one for today. <laughs> Boobies and gravity. That sounds like the name of a band. Boobies and gravity. Yeah, that screenshot was. Uh, that was just like a little little jab, right? Um, yes, what do we want to say about your face? Let's uh, select that, make that its only thing. And 
restore this. Where did our body go? Cool. Darling Arts, thank you so much for the follow and welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Uh, to note, she is not human. Uh, well, either way, um, I don't want to say don't make excuses, uh, but either way, you know, I'm not proportionally saying, I'm not even looking at human anatomy, I'm not looking at references. I'm just saying these are some of the changes that I would make, and this is what I would look for, and this is what improves and makes your character look better. I think it looks better now. I think some of the changes that we've made have improved it. Take it or leave it. Uh, but never make excuses. Never make excuses. Not to say that you are making excuses, but uh, I see that as a common thing in critiques. And I don't want to see it here. You kids play nice up there. <laughs> All right. So in the face, uh, the jaw, angle of the jaw line, I would bring this back a little bit. The angle here is, I think, ooh, where's my transpose line? Is a little bit crazy. Uh, I would say that in terms of how far back that is, it's probably a little bit of a combination of bringing that jawline back, or that point of the back jaw there, as well as the uh, jawline at the top back a little bit. Move that ear. Uh, again, I know you're having that trouble with the masking here. I hope that you got that figured out. Uh, I know that's, you know, those kind of things are stupid and super annoying to deal with. Uh, shape of the eyes. You've done some cool stuff here. I would be uh, careful with the corner of your eye, the geometry here. Ooh, it looks like you maybe did some polygroup. Uh, either you did you merge these together or did you just polygroup remesh? It doesn't look like you polygroup remesh because I think that would be a little bit cleaner. But uh, be careful here around the corner of the eyes. I would try if I were you to maybe uh, attempt to reconnect these back up. However you want to go about doing that, I'm kind of doing that on a high-res mesh, it's a little tough. But however you want to reconnect some of this back up so it doesn't have a super open area there, and then you can start thinking more about like the tear duct and everything else. It actually might be easier for you to sculpt the tear duct directly in on top of that. Think about your nose and you know how that's going to, Ooh, what's going on? It's got like a ton of leg there. Uh, think about the nose and how you want to uh, have that connected around here. Uh, try not to end up in a situation where it's, you know, fading in super strong and just like disappearing. I would say with female noses in general, I don't know if you're referencing anything uh, or if you're just kind of going, going off the dome here, but uh, I try to avoid having super hard transitional areas in my nose uh, or, you know, on my face in general. I think super hard transitions make a face look more masculine. Typically that's the case. Uh, so be careful with that. Unless you want her to be super masculine. Maybe, maybe she is, I don't know. Uh, let's see, it's a little bit hard for me to move some of this around, but I would make your nose much less wide simply because we want a more feminine nose and more feminine schnozzes are a little bit smaller and big, big manly schnozzes. Same thing with the ear. I would maybe, you know, make that a little bit, a little bit smaller and a little bit more actually shaped like an ear. Oh, let's see here. What did you do? Oh, okay. I see. I see what you did. You just have that split off. It's not connected. Uh, looking at the silhouette from here, try to avoid a little bit of the duck lip situation that we were looking at before uh, with uh, Harris's cowgirl. So maybe try to bring that in a little bit and also look at the uh, plane right here for the nose where that connects. There's a little bit of a uh, tighter plane change typically and less of a you know gradual kind of swoop in like that. So try to maybe get that a little bit tighter. Look at the lips here for that duck faciness going on. But other than that, I think she's looking good. I would maybe fix some of the roundness here in the head. Let's look at the top view. We do have that kind of bulging back. But it looks like maybe there's like a little bit of a 
concavity kind of like dip in here. So maybe you can get some more roundness and just like carry that shape up to the front a little bit better. I think just a little bit more volume there will actually help that quite a bit. And just even with a few strokes here, that starts to feel a bit better. Be looking at that three quarter view as well. Uh, let's see. I don't know, cheekbones feel a little low. That's more of just like me saying preferentially for myself. I don't know. I kind of like the uh, the tight shape that you have going on there. I might try experimenting with, uh, you know, blending this out a little bit more. But I think it's a pretty cool shape. And actually, actually I kind of like that. I kind of like that nice roundness that we get in here. So play around with that too. Play around a lot. But cool man, you got some, some fun stuff going on here. And I look forward to seeing where you take it next time. Definitely have to send a uh, screenshot when you're done playing around with this gal. Cool, cool, cool. A Japanese punk band? Yes, for sure. Boobies and Gravity is a Japanese punk band. Uh, let's see. A series of bust slash face sculpt critiques could be called, <laughs> say it to my face. Nice, nice, nice. Um, let's see, is she modeled after a black character? That's what black noses look like, right? Well, not every face is the same. Not every, you know, Hispanic nose is exactly the same. But I think uh, for feminine faces, I definitely try to go a bit smaller. Uh, I think for uh, Caucasian people, I would say noses are probably more narrow in general. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Kind of depends on the person, I guess. Boobies and Gravity is a punk band from the 90s. It could be. It could just be, you know, in general, a, uh, an awesome punk band. Or it's going to be my my new band. I have a guitar that I never play anymore. So that was my, uh, my like, two-year hobby in high school. <laughs> Uh, let's see, check an email real quick. Let me do a quick refresh on this. See if we got anything else in the list here, which it doesn't look like we do. So I will give a couple minutes here just to make sure we don't have any last minute questions. Let's scroll back through everything that we've looked at. Uh, we looked at Benny Frank here. This hair's a little bright. We'll turn that off here. Benjamin Franklin, he was really cool. He was a lot of fun to, to play with. I think there was some really good stuff here on the face, just kind of some accuracy issues. And then we looked at the Shane Olsen character, which was uh, pretty cool as well. I think mainly there were just some proportional issues here. Um, and then some kind of like fundamental, a couple fundamental things. Pazzo, Pazzo Pazzini, thank you so much for the follow. I just got an eyelash uh, in my eye right as I, right as I said that. Uh, we got the cute little dino boy. He's adorable, and he was fun to play around with as well. Based off of an original sketch by, uh, uh, Hernandez? Was it Hernandez? Who? I can't remember. Uh, let's see. We had the cowboy gal as well. I think her hat's in here somewhere. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, uh, the rest of that's hidden. And we had our last one here. Ooh which is our character blockout. Our character blockout for our alien. I don't know if she's an alien. <laughs> uh, cool guys. Well, that was a ton of fun. Uh, we looked at a lot of stuff. Hopefully again, this has been helpful for you. I will again shout out my Discord, which there is a link for down below. Uh, there's links to all my stuff, but I would appreciate it if you checked out my uh, Gumroad. I think I said Discord. I'd appreciate it if you checked out my Gumroad, gumroad.com slash Follygon. I have some courses on here. If you're brand new to ZBrush and Digital Sculpting, I recommend my Quick Start course. I also have some more intermediate and advanced stuff on here as well as some base meshes, some brushes, some more base meshes, my custom UI, my materials that I use, all sorts of uh, cool stuff that I think will help you guys out. So again, gumroad.com slash Folygon. And if you guys wanna get your stuff critiqued, because we're closing out here, We'll be doing the same thing next Friday at the same time. Noon EST every Friday. Get your stuff in. Shoot me an email, folygon at gmail.com. And with that said, you guys have an awesome weekend. Uh, the next time I'll be streaming will not be until Monday. Monday at noon EST here. And I also stream on the Pixelogic ZBrush channel 
on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. EST. I am trying to... Ooh, I found a 3D person. There's never anybody doing 3D on Twitch. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Have a wonderful weekend.